I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to run a Bitcoin node using Start9's Embassy OS along with hardware I bought on Amazon. I'm Darren, I made a video tutorial on how to set up a Bitcoin node via Umbral. And now it's time to do the same with Start9. We're gonna cover what a Bitcoin node is, five reasons you need a Bitcoin node, all the node options, and why I'm switching to Start9, the DIY setup of the hardware, installation, setup of the software, walkthrough of all the apps, software, how to use it, the machines you can purchase to make this a whole lot easier, and at the end, if you use my referral code, you can get a discount on their hardware options. A Bitcoin node is a computer running Bitcoin software, and most importantly, it is a participant in the network that is formed by other nodes. It's what makes up the decentralized nature of Bitcoin. The two functions it sure serves is to keep a track of the Bitcoin's ledger, who all the holders are, all of the transactions, and the second is to store that Bitcoin rule set, the software, and how it can be transmitted. Now there's five main reasons you should run a node, and number one is certainty. Whether you know it or not, everyone who is using Bitcoin is connected to a node. The wallet or Bitcoin service you're using is relaying you the information from their own node or a community node. You trust their node to give you the correct information. The second is voting power. Nodes get to choose the rule set of the blockchain that they're running. The largest consensus rule set and historical chain of Bitcoin is what makes Bitcoin. Now, the only way you can change Bitcoin is by nodes accepting new rules to the protocol. When you rely on another node, they might choose different rules on your behalf, kind of voting on where Bitcoin's future is headed. If you want more information on this, read up on the block size wars and how Bitcoin Cash came to be. Third reason is privacy. When you're using another node, they can track your data, including your transactions, your addresses, even your IP address can be linked to you in some way or another. Now using your own node, you can have the privacy and security of not sharing this with anybody else. It does come with some responsibility because there are privacy trade-offs when you run your own node if you don't do it properly. Fourth is the strength of the network. Bitcoin exists through the nodes. If all nodes were shut down or destroyed, Bitcoin would no longer exist. This answers the age old question of, how could Bitcoin be shut down? The task at hand would be to go to every single node and destroy it. Bitcoin would still exist as long as one node still has the history of the transactions and the rule sets of the protocol. You can help make the network more robust by adding a node to the network, kind of a strength in numbers. And the fifth reason is what they call an Uncle Jim. So you can be a node for your friends, family, for your business, for your community, and become a valuable network that people can trust your node. The basics of a Bitcoin node is essentially downloading Bitcoin Core. And this is a software that's free, open source for everybody to use. Currently, the entirety of the blockchain is about 475 gigabytes. First of all, you're gonna need all that space on your computer to run the software. Seems easy enough, but the problem is you also have to run it 24 seven seven days a week if you want to receive payments, make payments without interruption. Another problem is Bitcoin Core by itself does not easily connect to your average consumer wallet you would download on a desktop or the app store. You'd have to run some scripts, do some coding to connect it to Electrum or connect it to the wallet app of your choice. And that's just not realistic for the average person like you and me. For this reason, there are many off the shelf node softwares that make it easy, plug and play, that even come with or suggest building separate computers in order to run this software 24 seven so you're not putting strain on your own computer. All these nodes come pre-configured. All you need to do is install it, connect it to your Wi-Fi, and power it up. There are a lot of solutions out there for you to use today, including MyNode, Ronin Dojo, Umbral, and many more. I previously made a video on Umbral, how to set it up in a DIY fashion with a Raspberry Pi, and it worked great for about six months or so until I ran into some performance issues. My main use for my node was for Bitcoin to verify my transactions, run some lightning channels. Where I ran into problems was trying to add and install a lot of other apps that I thought would help in my sovereign computing. My little Raspberry Pi and weak memory card were not really able to keep up, and that's some of the criticism that I've seen with Umbral. 
they act more of a all-in-one marketplace where they just add a ton of apps and I got caught up in adding all these apps when the performance is affected so is the security of it and when it comes to Bitcoin you do not want to be losing any security of your device so I've been looking for another node implementation looking at purchasing a specific server to run this or just using my old Raspberry Pi in a much more cleaner more effective software I settled with SART 9 Embassy OS. It is free, open source, and more Bitcoin focused, I feel, than some of the other competitors in the market. And there's a lot more security features and settings that can make it a lot better experience. So if you've purchased a SART 9 and want to skip ahead to the software tutorial, I'll put a link down below for you to do that. If you want to build it using a Raspberry Pi 4 or have a Raspberry Pi 4 that you want to migrate to Start9, then I'm going to show you what you need. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi 4. Including that is a 64 gigabyte memory card that they recommend with endurance. This is kind of where I went wrong and had a lot of problems with my Umbral. I only have a 16 gigabyte and it's not an endurance one. So according to support, a lot of my problems were based on my lack of performance. Power supply for that Raspberry Pi. Include that with an ethernet cable and you got exactly what you need. This is going to put you around two to three hundred dollars when all is said and done. So your first step is to install the Embassy Start 9 software. This is a free open source. I had a little bit of confusion on where to download on the GitHub for my Raspberry Pi specifically. But if you scroll down, they have all of their implementations here for each device. So I'm going to choose this file for my Raspberry Pi and install it. What you need to do next is flash it onto a memory card. So you're going to need a program that they recommend. Now it's easy to download and you can upload and from the link provided. Once you've downloaded both the Start9 software and the flashing program, you need to plug in your micro SD card to your computer. You're going to open your flashing software and choose the file you downloaded. Once that's uploaded, you're going to select the destination and it's going to be on a micro SD card. Now, everything on this micro SD card will be erased. When you're ready, you're going to flash the program. All that's left to do is to plug in your memory card to your Raspberry Pi, connect it to your router via the ethernet, and then finally plug it into power. Now this is connected to your local network, so all computers, handheld devices, anything that's connected to this network can access the Embassy OS software. So from here, it's the same steps as if you bought their hardware and setting it up today. So first you're gonna to go to http start.local. You're gonna choose fresh start, and this will bring up the storage device that is connected to your device that you either purchased, or in my case, my Raspberry Pi. You would then wanna create a password to access your embassy OS. This may take a few minutes to set up. Once it's loaded, it will give you your address info. Download this. It is your address. You're going to be accessing your start nine from your home network, or you can access it on the go via Tor on any network. Once you've saved that, you can now log in and create a password. Save this password because it is how you get back into start nine. Once you're logged in, it will bring you up the home page where you have all of your services, marketplaces, updates, notifications, and your system settings. And now that you're in, you're gonna get this last setup warning that you are on HTTP. Now, many apps require HTTPS to use it, and it will bring up this warning in till you do this. This is where it separates itself from something like Umbral. It does run on HTTPS, which is more secure. This is the only thing I found a little complex to use, but it walks you through all of the steps here. Under the system settings, we are going to go to LAN, and this is where you need to download your certificate in order to get HTTPS. You then have to get your system to trust this certificate. For me, I do it on Windows. You have to install this program with it. It does give you all the instructions to do it. This is quite the process, but I can tell you I have done it on Android, very easy. iOS is similar. Once that is done, you then need to configure your browser. So for example, I've been using Brave. So in Brave, you head to settings, privacy and security, manage device certificates, and then you're going to search for that certificate in which you downloaded. You then import it on to your browser and you should be able to now load that HTTPS address they gave you. 
Once that is done, you can now download Bitcoin Core. So we press install and it will begin the installation process. You'll need to configure some settings in order to complete the download and these are optional settings for you. I'm just going to keep it all default. Once you press start, it will then begin to download the entire transaction history of Bitcoin. This can take two to seven days depending on your hardware speed, internet speed. For me, it took about seven days because like I said, I don't have the greatest hardware currently running. Once it's 100% sync, you will get this green check mark, check mark that is synced with the network. We now have the entire history of Bitcoin installed and currently adding and updating the latest transactions that are happening. This is kind of pointless if you don't use Bitcoin to just have a computer that is downloading all the transactions that are happening. Add some tools to start nine to make this an effective tool for our Bitcoin usage. First thing most of us probably want to do is connect it to a wallet to verify the funds are ours. Under the instructions, it will give you a way to connect your wallet that you are using to start nines. From Blockstream Green to Blue Wallet, it gives you all the instructions, the specific software that is needed. So on Start9, for example, if you use Blue Wallet, you would need to also install the Electrum. Now you can see under the software, they also have dependencies. This one would need to have Bitcoin installed, which we already did. Again, if you were running Blue Wallet, you would need to have, you need to have first Bitcoin Core installed and then Electrum to run it in order to connect your Blue Wallet to your Start9 node. Now, if you're using Spectre, they have an app completely on here for it. You can scroll down through the dependencies again to see that install, it walks you through all the setup process. Another app I like to do is Mempool. You can see all the different dependencies it has on that. This is a block explorer to see all the transactions. Now I'm not going to go through setting up all of this. That's a whole another half an hour video, but let's just walk through some of the other options for you. If you want to join the Lightning Network, they have all the Lightning tools of Core Lightning, LND. These are implementations of Lightning. Other apps on here include messaging apps. You can use BTC Pay Server, which is a great way to accept Bitcoin. You have file sharing apps, cloud service apps websites, blogging platforms that you can all install and run locally on your Start9. Overall, I think Start9 is a great implementation of a Bitcoin node. At the same time, they are trying to be that personal server sovereign computer without going over the top and adding too many features fast. It really walks you through every single step, warns you of security, warns you if you put in the wrong numbers, codes, it has easing settings to change all the apps within it. It overall works a lot better than the competitors I've tried. In today's world, your photos, your messages, files are all probably in the cloud. And as you should know, there is no such thing as a cloud. It's just somebody else's computer. So with tools like Start9, you can finally control your own privacy and information, allowing you to become uncensorable when it comes to your money, your files, your messaging, your e-commerce, and your web hosting. If you're looking to run your own Bitcoin node and personal server, I would definitely give the Start9 devices a really good thought. It cost me about two to three hundred dollars to purchase and source all of my own materials anyway, where they give you the recommended software, just kind of a plug and play. You can use my referral code to get 8% off any of the purchases at their store. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. Feel free to message me directly. I'll help you out as best I can. If you like this video, I got more on my channels from different node setups to Bitcoin services, Bitcoin wallets, other tools you're gonna need to become more self-sovereign. My website, Bitcoin Starting Point, is all of my tutorials just listed in one place, kind of organized neatly if you wanna check that out. And uh, thanks for watching.